This is a Sony Handycam, but it's not just any Handycam, because this is one of Sony's professional grade camcorders that recorded high def video to mini DV tapes. And to say that I have been on the hunt for one of these for a long time would be a major understatement. And despite the rest of the world having moved on to more compact and contemporary offerings as far as cameras and camcorders are concerned, secondhand markets just clearly have not gotten the memo because every time I've looked into obtaining one of several of Sony's HDV, uh, the professional series camcorders that follow this form factor, I have been let down with just how rich the prices are that they're continuing to command despite at this point being over a decade and a half old. And despite not having pretty much any practical purpose for having a professional camcorder, for $40, which is what I paid for this camcorder, I couldn't say no, and it ended up following me home. This particular flavor of Handycam is the 2006 Sony HDR-FX7. Being that this is a camcorder that come from the time of high-def widescreen video, it now has a 16x9 matte box, and it even has a convenient hidden switch for activating these lens shutters to uh, protect your very expensive lens. And if for whatever reason you want to remove the lens hood, you can easily do so, just like with previous generations of uh, Canon and Sony camcorders with uh, lens hoods. You just remove the thumb screw, twist it off, and now we have access to the Carl Zeiss Vario Sonar T-Star lens. And while we're on the topic of the lens, this model does have 20x optical zoom, and more important than that, it has Super Steady Shot, which was their fully optical image stabilization. No useless electronic image stabilization here, folks. It's the real deal. Coming up to the top of the camera where the handle is, is the built-in stereo microphone, which, uh, going off of my testing, is a very high-quality uh, example of a microphone that a camcorder can come with. It doesn't pick up much, if any, of the motor noise of the tape compartment, fortunately because it is reasonably isolated from the rest of the camcorder's body. And it also has an infrared remote receiver and the obligatory red tally light. Lamented by many is the absence of a powered accessory or hot shoe, all you got for uh, around $3,500 MSRP, is a cold shoe and as far as external audio inputs are concerned the only thing you got on this model was a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack hidden behind this little flap it does have a secondary record start and stop button and a zoom rocker which has preset uh, speed settings as well as disabling it entirely you can actually dial in the speeds with which high and low presets of the switch operate at in the menu system and this camcorder was actually missing the viewfinder eyepiece eye cup attachment so to make it whole, make this particular example whole, I had to uh, spend uh, the very pricely sum of about $25 for uh, a used example of the eyepiece uh, attachment. I don't know what it is about these camcorders, but very many of those that I find secondhand are always missing this eye cup eyepiece attachment. There's nothing too terribly interesting going on on the right side of the camcorder, but I guess uh, for the sake of uh, being thorough, we'll take a look anyway. There is a zoom rocker, which is... Uh, it definitely allows you to dial in the speed with which you want to zoom. There's also a button here for taking still images to the Memory Stick Pro Duo card if you happen to have one installed into the camera, or for triggering the expanded focus feature, which will digitally zoom in the image to make getting tact sharp focus that much easier. Of course, this wouldn't be a Sony without the LENC remote control jack and the typical camera VCR on and off switch, which on uh, my example is actually rather finicky. Behind these doors to the right side of the battery are some input and output connections for AV component and composite outputs and a DC input for charging. The firewire port on this camcorder is totally dead. I don't know how such a thing could happen. I know there are a number of stories online that uh, firewire ports like to get fried after people hot swap the camcorders or rather uh, connect them up while the camera and the computer are powered on and many people advise against doing so but this one is totally dead so the only way that I could get the footage off of this camcorder is by ejecting the tape and now using any of my uh, other HDV tape camcorders. Being that this was a professional camcorder despite the time that it came from 2006 when Sony was downsizing their batteries I think by that point on their consumer models they were using infolithium M series and transitioning over to like the Infolithium P series. They were still using the much larger capacity and uh, physical size, of course, L series batteries. This is the biggest example that you can get for this camera from Sony, the NPF 
970 and hidden underneath the viewfinder and above the battery is a secondary hidden tally light and infrared remote receiver which you can actually see with night shot turned on on this camcorder this auto lock switch is used for either switching and locking the camera into a fully automatic mode leaving it to where you can manually customize settings or then locking those manual settings in place to prevent people from making unauthorized changes to them there's a gain adjustment which is for the image the lens not the audio shutter speed white balance menu button and a little jog wheel for scrolling through the menu this does have a three chip cmos image sensor whereas its predecessor the hdr fx1 did have a three chip ccd image sensor you might have noticed that there's two of these rubberized wheels on lens barrel these are used for manually focusing as well as zooming and while on the topic of focusing coming down here there's a button for turning on and off manual focus as well as a button for triggering the expanded focus feature which will digitally crop in the image it won't be recorded that way to tape but it makes it easier to manually focus on a subject and if you have the camcorder locked on manual focus mode and you need to uh, you want it to maybe auto focus on something else you can push and hold this button for it to override your manual focus settings the camera will auto focus on whatever you have it pointed at and the moment you release it it will revert back to manual focus you can adjust the exposure or the iris by pressing this button and using this thumb wheel there's a two-step neutral density filter integrated into the camera you might have noticed these three buttons over here labeled assign one two and three those are three out of six user definable preset buttons that you can program as per your preferences to trigger different things in the camera such as zebras i think a histogram color bars faders and search just to name a few the other three of these buttons are located behind the lcd screen which oh yeah this lcd screen is a whopping 3.5 inches in size and i'm not saying that sarcastically I am coming from the land of really old cameras and camcorders, so having a 3.5 inch wide screen is uh, really a nice quality of life improvement. There's no shortage of buttons hiding behind the screen and behind this little trap door. It's a Memory Stick Pro Duo card slot for taking still images only. There's a micro or a rather mini USB connection for accessing said photos on the memory stick and a full-size HDMI output. And uh, what is a rather uncharacteristic stroke of luck for me, at least buying things like this, the tape mechanism actually works. The mechanisms that Sony had used for their HDV camcorders must have been made out of paper mache, that or uh, maybe it just had something to do with the great level of miniaturization that all the components had to... Um, I'll be subjected to compared to like eight millimeter because these things just don't like to last and now that they're getting older it's getting very hard to find ones that work properly for whatever reason it doesn't like to eject unless the camera is turned on and uh, here's an example of that finicky power switch that it kind of jiggle it the menu is chock full of different settings and functions for example, adjusting the function of this exposure or iris button. Steady shot, which isn't cut and as cut and dry as it is on their consumer camcorders, because not only can you turn it on or off, you can actually adjust the type from hard, standard, or soft, depending on uh, how much stabilization you want to take place. Autofocus Assist is a convenient feature that, when turned on, will allow you to override the uh, automatic focus. Let's say it's having trouble hunting, and uh, I'll just put something here we can focus on and now uh, even though it's still set to autofocus I can use the wheel to zoom or rather focus in or out as soon as you stop of course it will revert back to autofocus has a nifty little feature called focus peaking which when turned on will help you to tell when something is in focus by outlining it in the color you've chosen so for example everything's out of focus now nothing is outlined in yellow and then as i get closer to uh, having those things in focus you can see that they start to get outlined in yellow or whatever color you have chosen in the menu and the setting called cam data display which will give you quick uh, at a glance information on the bottom of the screen of your aperture shutter things like that now you can uh, see the gain shutter speed aperture then coming down here is a more interesting uh, menu that has some other stuff that you wouldn't find on other handycams for example this setting called camera prof 
which means camera profiles and you can save different configurations of the camera to profiles and then recall them if different people are using the camera or maybe you have uh, different situations different settings that you want to use different circumstances without having to start from square one so if I manage not to like cancel out the menu I just do load and then this will reboot and then change the settings back to whatever uh, was saved as part of that preset. Here's where you could assign the uh, functionality of these assign buttons. So instead of having to hunt through the menu to uh, do any of these things, I can just turn markers on or off, color bars. Now if I scroll all the way down to where it says shot transition and turn this on. So I'm going to store a shot A and now zoom in. Move that uh, over there and just very, very crude example of this, uh, how it works, but then I could set shot B, that's programmed in, and now, if I go ahead, I can uh, call up either of these shots, and that applies to uh, the zoom, as well as the focal points, if I manually focused on one subject or another, and then, it'll tell you when it's starting and ending It gives you this little graph down here to assist I guess in your timing or if you're framing the camera differently as the transition is taking place but again I could just call up shot B as I move the camera and remember how I mentioned that the camcorder gives you helpful little hints as far as the neutral density filter is concerned well here's a little example of that so I'll turn that on to neutral density 2 and you can see now on the left side of the screen it starts flashing at us neutral density off to give us a not so subtle hint that we need to turn it off expanded focus triggered by either pressing this button over here depending on what you have it set to do in the menu or using the one that is down here will again digitally zoom in the image it doesn't record this to the tape just to make it easier to focus manually Likewise, I have it set to manual focus right now. Everything's totally out of focus, but again, let's say we have a rapid scene change. I just type, uh, not type, <laughs> I push the uh, push autofocus button. It'll turn on autofocus and then I release it and it stays locked on now at new focal point. A quick look at the uh, picture profiles, portrait, cinema, sunset, and monotone. When I first got this camera, I couldn't figure out how to adjust the uh, sharpening or the uh, color, the saturation intensity but you do so in these profiles. So I could go down here, just do one of these custom ones, go into the settings, adjust the color level, color phase, sharpness. So having a physical button for that makes it very easy to cycle through these. And status check, as I mentioned before, gives you a very quick and easy view of what's going on with the camera, level meters, your input, record level settings, and you could cycle through these to view your HDMI output settings, what your assign buttons are doing, and then different camera settings, how they are currently set. This camera was working last I checked it several months ago when I used it to record some test footage, and it's pretty much uh, sat dormant ever since then. So who knows, because these tape compartments like to get very, uh, they like to misbehave after sitting a while. So we'll see what happens here live on camera. be the first to admit this uh, tape mechanism doesn't always sound as healthy as it should be especially when it's retracting the tape in or ejecting it it just sounds rather labored you just have to exercise these things you use them or lose them otherwise they they just stop working okay well we do have a tape counter and remaining time there's no error code flashing or any kind of beeping so uh, should be in the clear hopefully switch this over to VCR mode
lined up you some patch of the road. In spite of the fact that this camcorder is over a decade and a half old at this point, the quality of the results that uh, I was able to achieve using this thing as a complete and total amateur were nothing short of impressive. The quality of the video and audio speaks for itself. The video is crisp and vibrant, plenty of contrast and sharpness. The optical zoom and image stabilization does a perfect job at uh, making the video look a little bit more presentable. And the quality of the audio recorded using the built-in stereo microphones is excellent. Lots of stereo separation, crisp and clear, not at all muffled, and barely, if any, tape motor noise gets picked up in the microphones. In closing, this Sony HDR FX7 is uh, pretty much everything I could have asked for in a professional camcorder. It has more features than I know what to do with or could ever put fully to use. It works. And it was cheap. National Geographic, here I come with my 17-year-old HDV tape camcorder.